Before you can like breathe in like a whole breath, it like cuts you off at the half, like half point, and then so you only get a little bit, and then you're like, <gasps> like struggling for air like the whole time. This isn't a disaster. Uh, many parents will say, oh no, my son or daughter has asthma, it's going to affect their entire life. What we say is with education, a child with asthma can be anything they want to. Asthma, it's a disease that affects both children and adults. A third of the 15 million Americans who suffer from asthma are under the age of 18. In the early 1990s, the number of asthma cases increased by 34%. Asthma is a growing concern in this country, particularly in inner-city African-American and Latino populations. The disease affects the airways in the lungs. When an asthma attack occurs, airways become smaller and breathing becomes difficult. Let's say the normal size of an airway is this big. Then when a child has an asthma attack, the airway may narrow down to a size of only this large. In other words, it may be analogous to breathing through a straw. Thus, one can easily see why a child having an asthma attack might have difficulty breathing. If you or someone you know has been through an asthma attack, you know how frightening it can be. Certain things can start an asthma attack. Some are controllable, some like pollens, a cold, and stress cannot always be prevented. In the next few minutes, we'll explain how you can do some simple things at home to help prevent an asthma attack from occurring. We're going to share some tips on how to reduce exposure to those asthma triggers that are right in our own home and can be controlled. Asthma is a very common disease, but it's treatable, and you have to follow some very simple rules. Everyone has to understand asthma is not a disaster. Preventing an asthma attack is the goal. First, try to identify the triggers that cause breathing difficulties. And there are hundreds of triggers that are different for different people. But there are five main controllable triggers in the home that affect the majority of people with asthma. Tobacco smoke, cockroaches, dust mites, mold, and pets. My concerns are how to help my child feel better and learn the asthma triggers in my home and how to deal with them. When I have an asthma attack, it's like your heart beats real fast and you feel like somebody stabbing a knife through your heart. Meet Amin Alek with the American Lung Association. She'll help us all understand ways we can minimize exposure to asthma triggers in our homes. When I'm at a home, one of the first things I look for are ways in which the homeowner can prevent asthma triggers and ways in which exposure to the child can be prevented. Let's go back to our five main triggers. Everyone knows tobacco smoke is bad for us. It's even more harmful to those who suffer from asthma. The child with asthma is very sensitive to the environment around him or her. There are few things in the home environment more unhealthy than tobacco smoke. My daughter used to have problems breathing when I smoked around her. Now I only smoke outside, and I'm actually thinking about quitting. I also smoke outside and she has a lot less problems. If there's a child with asthma in your home, declare your house smoke free and ask people to smoke outside. The second trigger may surprise you. Scientists now know that if your child has asthma, there's a good chance that any exposure to cockroaches is making it worse. So getting rid of cockroaches in the home is very important. For some people, living in old buildings, it can be very difficult, and many people think first of buying pesticides. James Samuel with the American Lung Association will help us all understand ways we can minimize exposure to pests in our homes. The problem with pesticides is that they're poisons, and too much poison in your home can cause a health problem. So, before using pesticides, first you have to be sure you've done the best job you can without using them. There are five basic things you can do to keep cockroaches out of your home. All of the following methods can also work for keeping other pests, such as mice, rats, and ants, out of your home. Eliminate food and water that pests can get to. Think of it this way. If there's nothing for them to eat or drink, they can't live. 
Put food in plastic bags or tightly sealed containers so the pest can't get to it. Clean up crumbs after you eat. Wipe counters and floors to pick up dropped food. Fix leaky pipes and clean up any spilled water so there is no place for a pest to get a drink. Seal pest entryways into your home. This means sealing all holes leading into the apartment, including big gaps under the door, use weather stripping, and little nail holes in the walls. Sealing small entryways like cracks in walls and doors is good too, since roaches tend to live in those spaces. Caulk may be fine for some areas, but for other areas you might need plaster or wood. Using a piece of foam is a good way to fill a larger hole in your wall. If there is a mouse problem, wire mesh wrapped around the foam will keep the mice from chewing through the foam. Also, don't use steel wool to fill holes. It rusts quickly and breaks down. Get rid of places for pests to hide. Pests live in clutter, in stacks of newspaper and messy closets. Get rid of all clutter you don't need. Use safer pesticides and use them carefully. As we mentioned before, pesticides need to be used carefully and correctly because they are poisons after all. You may be able to buy boric acid powder in a hardware or drugstore in a squeeze bottle. Boric acid powder is a safer alternative to many commercially available pesticides. You need to use boric acid powder that says on the label it's good for killing cockroaches. To control cockroaches, puff boric acid powder into cracks and crevices in walls, baseboards, behind the refrigerator and stove, between counter and stove, and anywhere else that might be a pest entryway into your home. Be sure to store it in a safe place out of reach of children and pets when it is not in use. In addition to boric acid powder, baits can be very effective and they introduce very little pesticides into the home. Also, please make sure that you only use pesticides as the label instructs and never use any pesticides indoors that are meant for outdoor use. Only use pesticides that are sold in retail stores. If you decide to use a pest control company or operator to deal with your pest problem, make sure that the company is licensed. So let's review the five ways to reduce pests get rid of past food sources, get rid of past water sources, clean up clutter, seal past entryways into your home, use boric acid powder safely. Another trigger is dust mites. They are so small you can't see them, but they are in most homes. Dust mites are common. They live off flakes of skin that collect on fabric, in your carpeting, in your couch, in your pillows, and mattress. A child has high exposure to dust mites in his bedroom. When at home, your child spends most of his time sleeping in bed. Washing linens often is one of the most important ways to reduce dust mites. To get rid of dust mites, wash your sheets and pillowcases in very hot water, over 130 degrees Fahrenheit, at least once a week. To keep dust mites out of the inside of your mattress and pillow, use allergy-proof covers for both. Plastic covers under sheets also work well and are cheap, but less comfortable. Carpet is another place where dust mites live. The best solution is to remove the carpet or not have it installed in the first place. However, there are options to help you control dust mites in your carpet if this is not possible. Putting a fine particle vacuum bag into your vacuum cleaner will help to reduce the dust in your home and keep it from spreading. Be sure to vacuum when the child with asthma is not there. There are also products you can apply to your carpet or to other fabrics in your home that may help you to reduce the number of dust mites. Hard surface floors are the easiest to keep free of dust mites because you can damp mop and damp dust floors. So let's review the ways to get rid of dust mites. Wash bedding often in hot water. Use allergy proof mattress and pillow covers. Vacuum often using a fine particle vacuum bag. Another major asthma trigger is mold. Where is it in your house? Look for areas where there are signs of moisture. Moisture can come from leaky pipes, spilled water, or condensation. Like on walls or under rugs, when a warm surface is in contact with colder temperatures, when mold has penetrated a soft surface like a carpet or wood, you may need to throw it away. Where there is moisture, mold can grow, like right over here in the corner. If you have mold growing, then that is a possible asthma trigger. The best way to control mold is to get rid of the moisture repair leaks, repair, replace, or get rid of water-damaged possessions so they don't grow mold. Clean areas that have mold growth by using a diluted household bleach solution, 10 parts water to one part bleach. Scrub the moldy surface. When the cleaning solution begins to look dirty, mix up a fresh batch. Also, keep the child with asthma out of the area when using bleach because it can irritate nose, throat and lungs. 
Mold grows more easily when there is high humidity. You can use a dehumidifier to remove the water from the air, but be sure to empty and clean the drip pan often to avoid mold growth. So let's review the ways to get rid of mold in your home. Fix leaks, repair, replace, or discard water damaged possessions, clean areas with mold growth, use a dehumidifier. The last major trigger is usually a member of the family, your pet. Families who have a child with asthma are better off without pets. If that's not an option, can you at least keep the pet outdoors? Be sure to keep the pet out of the bedroom. Give your pet frequent baths, vacuum with a fine particle filter bag, and clean more often. Let's review the fine main controllable asthma triggers. Tobacco smoke, cockroaches, dust mites, mold, and pets. Also be aware that smoke from wood stoves or fireplaces, indoor kerosene heaters, strong odors and perfumes, or cleaning chemicals can also trigger an asthma attack. Also watch for other things that set off yours or your child's asthma. Follow these suggested practices and keep everyone breathing easier. For more detailed information, I encourage you to contact your local American Lung Association at 1-800-LUNG-USA or contact your local health department. I'm Al Wyman. Thanks for watching.